Welcome to FinTech Online Center. One of the key questions that one might ask these days is what do we really mean when we call something FinTech? We see that the term FinTech itself combines two words, finance and technology. And somehow we all might know so far that uh, it refers to an innovative startup that uses technology to think financial and banking services. But generally speaking, fintechs are startups that are connected with information and communication technologies that are somehow trying to capture the market share of those uh, large companies, which are not always very innovative or which are somehow lagging in the adoption of new technologies. So the next question might be, since when do we have it and since when do we have, do we have to call this phenomenon fintech? Well, Right after the world economic crisis of 2008, there were many, many bankers and traders who left their major financial centers, their offices and banks and stock exchanges, and who decided to take entrepreneurial adventures in order to rethink uh, the model of financing through technological innovation. So we can see that the main goal of these uh, very brave people was to make finance easier and to make uh, more, it more accessible to others by offering better, but what's more important, cheaper services to others. So the term fintech is generally used to refer to companies or more specifically startups whose main purpose was to provide a number of activities that are all revolving around money. So fintech is being developed in many, many areas uh, from uh, saving management to loans for individuals uh, through corporate financing or uh, online payments etc and uh, after seeing their success in a variety of industries such as music uh, or press or uh, tourism sector uh, the new technology seems to be creating uh, another revolution and this time it's all happening inside the banking and financial sector so, uh, as anywhere else in business, uh, there are three key categories of fintech. The first one is something that we might call B2B fintechs or business to business. And this kind uh, offers uh, financial services to companies, uh, SMEs or large accounts, such as online currency transfer or dematerial factoring, etc. The second category is something that we might call B2C or business to consumer fintechs and uh, that is aimed for, uh, at the general public which offer an account uh, and a local payment card uh, for personal finance management applications etc and the third category so far is uh, b to b to c or something that we call business to business to consumer and that includes crowdfunding platforms that bring together project creators, project leaders, SMEs, retailers, and investors. Also, uh, one of the most uh, significant uh, characteristics of all those fintechs is uh, their very special status in the technological sector, as uh, there are so many financial companies that are subject to special kinds of regulations. And we, when we talk about this kind of regulations and this regulated market that imposes uh, very strong but necessary constraints for the protection of the consumer, we see that uh, this could be divided in four different groups. So inside of this, the first group uh, is the most publicized and uh, it brings together activities of crowdfunding. And uh, through a dedicated platform, individuals can finance business projects or artistic creation. So this kind of financing can, uh, can be uh, the, in the form of donation or a participation in the company's own funds or some SME's loan called crowd lending, which includes uh, loans from individuals to individuals. The second group consists of uh, mobile applications or platforms that allow managing banking activities to control expenses or to make investment choices. Uh, the third category or the third group of these activities is related to digital currencies, but besides that, uh, monetary exchange systems have uh, also developed uh, on Facebook social network uh, under Facebook credits and many similar that are emerging right now. So 
the fourth category is related to electronic payment via smartphones and on internet, e-commerce platforms, etc. So this is particularly the case with a system such as PayPal, which uh, allows us to pay for purchases or receive money securely without having to transmit its banking details. So all additional sectors have seen their business models turns, uh, uh, turned uh, upside down by the internet revolution. So we have seen so far that uh, Amazon in, dis in distribution, Uber in taxis, Airbnb in rentals, and uh, this is something that is turning upside down uh, banking sector and is making challenging new technologies. So fintechs seem to compete with banks in the first place in the traditional banking sector that still holds a very dominant position on the market. So if their position as an intermediary is challenged by these uh, new platforms that directly connect individuals to each other, few fintech startups actually really compete with traditional banks. In fact, uh, these are often complementary services to traditional banking that are offering something that actually forces banks to innovate. Thank you for following Fintech Online Center.